Welcome back. So today's video is going to be a January wardrobe favorites video. This is going to be the first installment of hopefully a monthly series that I'm going to be doing for the entire year. I have taken a little bit of an accidental hiatus from YouTube in the last year in 2023 just because of personal life things, quite exciting things that have happened in my life, but I do admit that YouTube has um, sort of dropped down in terms of my priorities list for hobbies, which I really never kind of intended to happen. Um, I love this hobby and I love filming videos and editing videos and things like that and talking about fashion. So I definitely have made it part of my 2024 goals to get back to it. Um, I don't want to ramble on too much, so but long story short, the luxury market isn't really something that I've been, I'm still passionate about it I have to say but it's not something that I'm actively investing my funds into anymore mostly because I do have a wedding to plan for now um, so I'm saving a lot of money there uh, for that occasion but also the price increases that have happened on the bags and everything that I've used to love investing my money in because it has sentimental and also um, sort of wardrobe roles to play um i haven't really been investing that much time in anymore i ha i am very happy with my bag collection at the moment and with the bags kind of retailing from around three thousand four thousand pounds each it's quite difficult for me to justify um but what i do hope is kind of to make use of the already extensive collection that i have if you will um and do monthly reviews on those bags instead because i do still think that those could be quite relevant for those who are interested so that's kind of where the luxury aspect of it goes but in terms of freshness and content that i really want to put out i'm still very very interested in fashion it's still something that I'm kind of looking into and investing a lot of my spare time into. Um, so I would love for the channel to sort of grow that kind of um, muscle um, in terms of where I want my content to sit. So hopefully you're still interested in that and do subscribe if you are. But I'll get back to the point of the video for today, which is my January favorites video. Without further ado, I have my notebook here. I'm going to start off with outerwear. So outerwear has been a huge passion of mine every single winter, but I'm proud to say that this year I didn't actually purchase a new coat, which is new for me in 2023. I have been looking very actively, you know, I don't know if you've seen, you know, the cause double-breasted coats that have kind of gone viral and I've been trying to get my hands on those for quite some time, but it's not come back into stock and I've kind of convinced myself out of it, which I'm pretty proud of. But I did get something for Christmas that I've been really loving. So this is going to be featured in my January favorites video. So it's a sort of a collarless um, fleece jacket from a brand called Lolly's Laundry Copenhagen. I don't know if you can see there. Yeah. And I got it in a size medium. I did get this from for Christmas from my partner, but I do have to say that I found this myself um, in a store when I was shopping and I loved it so he offered to get it for me for Christmas which I'm very very happy about and you can see here that the color combination is a kind of mix between brown so kind of a chocolate brown and a navy color which is essentially my favorite color combination if you can't tell already I love my navies and I love my browns and you can see from my one of my scrunchies here is as well like it's just one of my favorite color combinations it makes me feel at once happy and also quite calm so it's just one of my favorite colors to look at and also to wear and this jacket has really come in handy it's not necessarily super thick so if i open it up here and take the hanger off you can see that it's lined in a polyester lining and then it's got kind of fleece trims all around the edges of the garment and also in the sleeves here you can see that it looks like it's kind of lined all in fleece, but it's not. You can see the polyester jutting out here afterwards as well. And it has been a perfect layering piece. When I first saw the jacket, I thought maybe this would be more suitable for the autumn winter, autumn season and the spring season just because of its lightness. But because of its shape, kind of um, the collarless shape of it and the U-neck, it kind of lends itself to being a layering top as well. So I've been getting a lot of wear out of this with a long sleeve shirt underneath and a this jacket layered on top and then an overcoat and I could wear that during winter times and then when I'm indoors for example at a restaurant or at the mall or something like that I can shed that coat off and just wear this jacket as a top so I've been really loving it and it's got four no five one two three 
four popper buttons, silver popper button accents, which I think really pops against the dark tone of the jacket and it's slightly oversized in terms of the kind of bat wing construction of it. And it's also slightly cropped, but not too cropped so that it could actually cover your sort of lower hip area, which is very comfortable for me. So I, I've been really, really loving this. And yeah, I'm just really glad that I got this for Christmas in my favorite color combination. And then the other outerwear piece that I wanted to talk to you about was this Burberry um, coat. So it's a wool and cashmere blend and it's vintage Burberry by the way but before I get into it it's vintage Burberry as you can see from the label over here I actually got this in a charity shop or a thrift store back in 2019 and but because of the sh construction of the shoulder it's quite oversized it's it's sort of the similar vibes as the Home Alone movies the what the one where the mom wears kind of her Max Mara giant coat. This is kind of why I purchased it in the first place in 2019, but because my style back then was slightly less sort of oversized tailoring and more sort of uh, form-fitting mom jeans, things like that, it didn't really go with my style back then, but it's really come into its own in 2023 and 2024, and I've been wearing this a lot, a lot, and I've gotten so many compliments for it as well, which I'm really happy about. I've actually tried to sell this coat three or four times now on Vestier Collective. Nobody was taking it, and now I'm quite glad that they didn't. I think it might have been just meant to be in my wardrobe anyway. Um, and yeah, it's it's not too kind of groundbreaking. It's a car coat style, I believe, with sort of a Peter Pan collar. At the top, an oversized, very, very oversized and pronounced shoulders, which I know is one of the trends that are coming in for 2023 and also 2024. So I'm just really excited to keep wearing this into sort of February and March months. And then when it, you know, next year rolls around for autumn, winter, I'll definitely pull this back out again. But I was on the hunt for another camel coat for quite some time. But now I'm really glad that I've gotten into the mindset where I try to reincorporate and rewear things that are in my closet that perhaps before I was trying to sell just to see if I can vibe with it again and I have so I'm really happy about this um, but yeah this vintage Burberry coat has been a lifesaver also because it's wool and cashmere very very warm and I've been layering it a lot with this as well I think the color combination for it to show underneath is really nice too so yeah these are my two outerwear favorites the second category that i wanted to talk about is shoes so the first pair is actually a pair of um netted trainers i know that i have a video that um talks about me not really liking too much of the mesh sort of sportswear looking trainers and i'm more of a refined trainers kind of person but i did actually kind of like evolve i would say my style and i'm finding certain silhouettes of um, mesh trainers really really good so yeah this one I actually found um, my partner actually found a different pair he has the gray pair and I after he purchased them I loved them so I got my own pair as well so these are the Nike P6000s yeah you can see over here if it can focus yeah it's a P6000s and I've got this in the red and yellow and white and black and silver combination it's quite a handful but from afar and also as a sneaker itself the color combinations actually work really well together and these are the most comfortable trainers I've worn for quite a while these are very reminiscent of the ones that I used to wear when I was in middle school um, and my mom would buy me these mesh trainers that are a couple sizes too big so that I can grow into them they're very reminiscent of that I've walked all over Guatemala and New York we were there recently for a friend's wedding non-stop around 20,000 25,000 steps a day um, and I've never even had it rub anywhere and actually I had a huge blister um, because we did a volcano hike in Guatemala and Antigua and I had a ginormous blister on my third toe and I had to wear trainers because I didn't pack anything else so I wore these afterwards and they didn't rub at all so I, I hiked in a different pair of um, hiking shoes but yeah these ones are just amazing they also go with everything I think because it's quite an extreme design but quite minimal in terms of the line construction and um, the color combination as well they've been really really easy to match with a lot of different outfits and they're sort of quite overtly ugly trainers so there's not really anything where you need to sort of be like oh yeah this is kind of a more refined trainer so maybe you have to wear more sleek outfits this doesn't really lend itself to that at all and i've found it extremely versatile very very comfortable and i got them true to size they are a size us 9 uk 6.5 and europe 40.5 okay i would say i'm a size Europe 40 but I think because these are unisex 
just go with your usual size um, or maybe half a size up if you like. But yeah, I've been really, really loving these as well. The next footwear item, I know that Uggs have been kind of making a huge comeback this year and I am no exception. I, to be honest, I really wanted the Taz Tazlamans or Tazlitas or something like that for a while but then I saw these and I was very very intrigued by them mainly because it has the platform but it also has the sort of fluffy line over here as well that I thought was really quite cute I really loved sort of the silhouette of this and because it's so chunky and it's such a big platform you can wear quite loose jeans around it so that it has the kind of trunk or the leg um, bottom of the leg kind of bunch up around the shearling collar of the shoe um, and have it kind of look a little effortless and cool which is the the kind of vibe that I really want to emulate um, yeah I got these in a chocolate brown color extremely comfortable as you can imagine as you kind of expect from Uggs. I got these back in October 2023 and I've worn them on countless dog walks, a lot of different trips. We went to France to Bergerac around um, and I wore these as well. I think there was actually an old lady who tried to speak to me but I didn't speak French and I felt so bad but she was saying, oh really big shoes, really big shoes, like are you not hot? Um, my partner speaks a little bit of French so he understood her and he had to translate. Um, but yeah, they are very comfortable. I wasn't that hot because it was a shearling collar so, but it's wool so it's breathable but very very comfortable and very versatile as well you wouldn't think that they are looking at this it's very kind of slipper material but because of the platform i think it gives you a bit of boost a bit of height and especially since you know the taz tazlis i think they're called the tazlis um are very on trend at the moment i think people kind of understand that you're wearing like comfortable cool uggs out and yeah they have been honestly a mainstay and, and a very comfortable pair for me as well in terms of shoes. The next item that I wanted to talk about is a pair of jeans that are actually, I'm cheating a little bit here because I only got them last week but I can already, you know how you, when you can just tell that something is something that you really love and you're going to get so much wear out of and to be honest with you I've never had this kind of feeling about a pair of jeans before. Purchasing jeans, especially with images online, it's really difficult to gauge how the construction and the fit is going to be around your specific body. And even when shopping in person, it's really difficult when you're holding up jeans to actually see where your curves are going to be lying within the jean as well. So I find it a very stressful, um, shopping situation and i know that a lot of people um kind of relate to that as well but i have to say i have hit the jackpot in terms of jeans and i know that the levi's 501s are very popular especially with influencers and things like that but i'm not a 501 person i don't think that it actually complements my shape very much i'm very much bottom heavy bigger hips and bigger thighs and bigger glutes so i wanted something that still looked effortless that didn't sort of hug me too tightly around my hips and thighs but gaping at the waist i really struggle with that um, and i found this pair of jeans from citizens of humanity you can see that the jean style is called the ayla isla i believe yeah so here it is it's the isla and i got them actually a size up so i got them i tried on the 28s and the 29s and both of them fit but because this jean well before i do that let me just show you the jean it's a very very oversized baggy soft very supple denim and it's it just feels like you're kind of wearing pajama pants but it's a really cool pair of jeans and i just love it and the wash that i got it in is called skylight and it's this perfect sort of kind of on the lighter side but not too light where it kind of looks stark um denim and it's got minimal amounts of distressing it has some whiskering over here on the thighs of course but then a very very minimal amount of kind of treatment to the coloring of the jean and i just absolutely love this one and the second i tried them on um in new york i bought them in new york because they were about 30 pounds cheaper than if i were to purchase it online here via revolve.com um, so yeah, when I found them in Nordstrom, I literally just wanted to try on every single size just to find out which one my size would be. And I actually went up a size. Um, so I'm usually a 28 and the 28 fit really well, but, um, around my butt area, it, it didn't have the sort of loose hanging 
vibe that I wanted and with the 29s it definitely did so I kind of decided to just go with the 29 wear it without a belt if I'm wearing longer shirts and then wear it with a belt if I am wearing shorter shirts and things like that so that it wouldn't kind of fall down too much too low on my hips and I would say probably go true to size if you have um, smaller or proportion wise if you are kind of the same on the top and the bottom go with your normal size and then if you are heavier on the bottom like I am, I would recommend sizing one size up so that you get the sort of slouchy, hanging um, silhouette that I was trying to achieve with this pair of jeans. So yeah, I love, love, love these. I know that they are expensive. I kind of gasped a little bit when I saw the price of it online, but I purchased trousers around the same price point anyway and I've had my pair of Philippa K navy trousers that I bought from 2020 and I still wear them every single season so I kind of justified that in my head that you know I wanted to invest in a pair of denim that actually for the first time ever I have felt amazing in and I've never really felt this amazing in a pair of jeans before and you can tell that I'm getting passionate because I'm starting to wave around but yeah I just think they're super super worth the money and I just can't wait to wear this with everything I'm gonna try to not to wear them with every single thing because I do have lots of clothes but yeah it's gonna be difficult because I love them so in terms of tops I don't have anything super legendary because I usually just live in the Uniqlo heat text and some combination of a t-shirt and a cardigan situation I focus a lot more on outerwear and jumpers and knitwear in the winter times but you know I haven't actually gotten any new knitwear in the past season so I just wanted to talk about this specific top it's just from H&M um, and it's a taupe ribbed long sleeve shirt and it's kind of a modal material modal cotton material and it's the perfect layering piece and I got it true to size in a size medium and I wanted to talk about this because it's very, very inexpensive and I've gotten a lot of wear out of this because of the way that it's cut. It's quite form-fitting and I love where the U-neck sits on your collarbone. I think it's quite flattering, especially if you wanted to lay your necklaces on top of it. Um, and it's a little bit of a change from the heat tech that a lot of us are probably assuming, but a lot of us we wear in the winter times. And also because of the material being slightly ribbed as well, it's quite forgiving in terms of um, where it sits um, and it doesn't highlight problem areas or areas that you might be more conscious of. So I really, really love this top and I definitely am thinking about getting it in different colors. I think it was like nine pounds or eight pounds or something like that. Um, and a really good sort of staple piece to have to layer underneath knitwear and outerwear, etc. So yeah, I love this one. Up is bags. Again, I was saying that I haven't really purchased, well, I haven't purchased any new designer bag in 2023. So I've been reusing a lot of the bags that I've purchased in years prior and I feel really good about it, to be honest. And I feel like I'm in a good place to speak about, you know, reviews, wear and tear of the collection that I already do have. So let me know if that is something that you're interested in seeing. I'm hoping to do one per month. Um, but yeah, in terms of this month, I have been really, really loving my Louis Vuitton Neverfull. I think you can see sort of how it's already patinaed quite a bit. And I've only had this for about two years. And I love how it's kind of the honey gold color that it's kind of gotten at the moment. I think it's really beautiful. And this bag has been extremely useful for all of my travels. It's been my personal item on every single flight that I've been on since I got it. And I have to say that this is the way that I want to travel from now on. I don't really think I need another sort of travel carry-on personal item bag ever again. And I know that it is an open tote bag and the Neverville has been speak spoken about for quite some time now, so I won't go into too much of the details of it. I do have a unboxing and why I got it video that I can link down below if you're interested in this specific bag. But the one hack that I wanted to show in this favorites video is that this D ring over here, that is traditionally for the additional pouch in the newer generation of Neverfulls can be such a great safety feature. And I know that it being an open top could be a little bit dubious for some people, but I would say if you have any sort of bags that have detachable straps or straps that have a little clip on it, what I've done is for every single bag that I have that I wanted to keep safe, for example, this is another one, spoiler alert, another one of my favorite bags, you can just put it on a D-ring within a D-ring within a D-ring. So what you can do is create sort of a matrix of clips 
this will make more sense when I show you, a matrix of clips so that, you know, it all connects to this one bag and you can put certain miscellaneous items in, you know, different parts of it. So for example, like you can have your passport in one of these bags and then you can have, you know, your um, Kleenex and wipes and stuff like that in another bag. And then if you're afraid of things kind of falling out, just clip everything onto a D-ring, onto a D-ring, onto a D-ring. And that's sort of how I've been able to hack my fear of things toppling over and then falling out. I think this has been an amazing lifesaver. And as you can see, I've had all my bags sort of connected here. This is my bag that I wore to Guatemala for the wedding, but I've just kind of attached it here as a pouch. And then I've attached this one as a pouch as well. And then obviously the pouch that I came with as a pouch as well. So everything, essentially what I'm trying to say is just attach everything onto the d-ring and then you don't and then put the items that you are afraid of falling out into your specific bags within that bag and then you can have yourself kind of a series of different pouches that can then obviously be taken out and used as the bags that they were intended to be used for so I love this bag and I think hopefully this tip sort of helps you if you do have one of these but you're scared of you know kicking it or something falling out in the flight and you're not realizing and then losing the item put them into another zip pouch or another zip bag and then do it on a d-ring on a d-ring on a d-ring so yeah um, the other bag that I wanted to talk about that is a favorite is a bit of a cheat because um, I don't, I, well I'm pretty sure you can't get this online, this was purchased for me by my partner in Guatemala by a local artisan, love this bag, it has sort of country vibes, if you can see it's obviously made with um, vegetable tan leather from Guatemala um, and it's got very useful pockets, so there's a front flat pocket here, there's a back zip pocket over here and then there's a compartment that is larger in the center over here as well. I have five dollars in here. <laughs> um, and the strap is adjustable as well. And the reason why I wanted to mention this is that I found a lot of use for bum bags in the last year. And this month has been no exception. And if you can find a bag that has different compartments like this that can sit quite close to your body, definitely, definitely, I would say is a worthy investment, especially if you live in crowded areas and things like that, where you're afraid of things getting stolen. Um, really, really useful as well. And this one has a jade in the center as well. I don't know if you can see that quite clearly, but it's kind of an emerald marbled green color and I really, really love it. And if I can find this brand's sort of website, hopefully online, then I would definitely put that below. But yeah, this one's a bit of a cheat, but because it's so sentimental, I do want to also feature it in this video. It's just such great memories about our trip and him buying this for me and everything, so I wanted to feature it as well. And we have a trip coming up in Nashville um, in June with some of our friends, and I think that this could be such a cute little bag um, for the summer Nashville trip as well. So yeah, I wanted to talk about this too. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me uh, for the random unexplained hiatus that I've been on for the past 11 months. I definitely do have a lot of vision in terms of where I want to do and what I want to do for this channel and where I want the channel to go in terms of my own content. So expect wardrobe reviews, favorites videos, and a lot of product specific reviews as well. I have still, you know, my extensive collection of bags i just want to provide a view on whether or not it's useful whether or not it's held up and it's worth its money if you're still considering something like that and who knows maybe i'll throw in some wedding content as well um if i can wrap my head around the planning process because it has been a slog and i'm very confused still but hopefully it'll all fall in place so yeah thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one bye